Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to Coding After 30. Uh, in this Tuesday night stream, we're basically working on building a portfolio for your project. Again, this is not like so much how-to video, although you could definitely learn a lot by watching, especially because you have me live here and you can ask questions. But the challenge of this live stream is to start from start to finish, work on a portfolio project and use that in your portfolio to get hired. And you should have a portfolio that you're working on because at the end of the day, if you're not building projects, it's going to be very difficult to get hired. So with that being said, we're going to continue on building our amazing or maybe not so amazing project. Um, and the whole point from this live stream is to show you guys the struggle that you might experience when coding at home by yourself, right? And it's not all peachy and cream like and exciting it because there's always stuff that breaks, stuff that doesn't work. And so I wanna give people a more realistic expectation of what to expect when you're basically, you know, building stuff at home. And so we're gonna continue building our project. The last stream we set up our basic login form, uh, which basically able to add the information, but it doesn't do anything, right? You can't log in. Uh, so today we're gonna add that functionality of how to log in. By the way, if you are in the comments and you're able to hear me well, let me know that the audio is working great. Let me know if um, you see me fine, you know, the music's not too loud, my voice is not too quiet, but that's something, you know, that we're gonna continue working with. And let me know in the comments, are you guys working on your projects? Are you doing what you should be doing? Here's the thing, guys. So this is something that I've been thinking about for a long time. Where do tutorials fall into place? Because I spent a lot of time in tutorial hell and I feel like that cost me a lot of good learning experience because I never stopped doing tutorials and tried to build something on my own. And now this is something I preach is that if you want to become a developer, the most time that you spend in front of the computer should be building your own things and not doing tutorials. So the idea now that's something I started thinking about, like, well, what's the benefit of tutorials? When you do tutorials, like from Udemy or other sites, you're basically learning enough skill to allow you to be able to build projects on your own. But doing tutorials in itself is never going to get you a job. Building your projects yourself from scratch, that's what's gonna turn you into a developer. And that's kind of like the whole point of this live stream. Hey, what's going on, brother? Good to see you. So without any ado, unless you guys have questions, we'll get started and we'll kind of just take a look at what we're doing. Uh, since the last stream, I did update some of the CSS on our site to make it like less scrap I could talk about. Also, it wasn't that many changes. It just made its style look a little bit better. But first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up kind of like this idea. And the first important thing when you're building something is have a plan. And obviously if you're, I'm kind of like doing this all freehand, freestyle, meaning that I don't really do a lot of prep outside of this actual stream because I want to show you that, you know, if I run into trouble, I want to show you that that happens. And I want to show you that that's normal. And so I'm kind of not doing too much planning outside of this uh, podcast. So I kind of came up with this whole idea. So you should never build a project until you have an idea of what you need to build. So let me kind of share with you guys and show you what we working so far. So this idea for now here is we basically going to create a simple UI like this. And all it's going to show is uh, users portfolios that they have submitted to this website. It's going to show some of the basic information like an avatar, like the heading, an image, all great stuff. And the point is here, if you try to like, unless you logged in, you can't like this comment. So if you're not logged in, it's gonna take you to the login page that we have here, which is like pretty awesome. But if you are logged in, you could like the portfolios by clicking the like button. And if you click details, it'll take you to the detail page, which is gonna talk about, you know, what tech they used for the portfolio, maybe have some images for the portfolio, as well as the GitHub link, their LinkedIn link, um, the link to their live side and the resume link. And then you'll have this little section here where people are able to leave comments based on this like portfolio, like very simple features. So in terms of data, what do we need? We need to have this concept of a like because like is going to live somewhere in a database. We obviously need users because users are going to have the portfolios and user you being the developers. Then we have the portfolios and then we have comments. So we set that database up already. Everything is connected. 
um, we've done it a couple of streams before and so and we're kind of working down this list like what do we want to do we want to display the portfolio display user avatars we introduced react router so we're on step five creating a login page so here uh, is the login well he's the app but this is displaying so basically i made these like shadows when you hover and make the cards kind of show up like this very basic css stuff um i also kind of made the image look more consistent and then i just changed the login page to look like this if you were here on the li last live stream it looked a little bit different that's fine so currently right now if i write you know a my email here and click sign in it just says form submitted but in the code it's actually not going anywhere and not doing anything so if we take a look at the code here in our login page login form i should say as you could see here we have our basic handle form submit function but it should be doing something with an api but it's not doing anything right now for now all it's doing is just checking if the form is not empty meaning we have the password and email and if it's not empty it's gonna fire this code okay on submit form submitted and if the form is empty you know please complete all the fields like i'll show you by example here so if let's say i had these blank and stuff like that and i click sign in it'll say please complete all the fields and eventually we'll have a legitimate error they'll showcase here whatever but for now we're just trying to bootstrap everything in terms of uh get the functionality down so today we're going to take a look on how can we make this page functional and we've been using um graphql with strappy that's kind of what we're using the back end and so we could learn about how to get started with creating this is actually going first to the strappy graphql documentation and kind of reading to it and right away from the very beginning they say Here's the registration example. They show you the mutation you have to write. And then here's the authentication. And this is the mutation we have to write to authenticate. And so that's kind of like we're going to use in our code to make sure that we could uh, send the data. And so, by the way, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Lucky's here. Hey, Lucky, good to see you. Let's go. Yep, we're going to go. Uh, we're going to keep doing this. So today we're going to make it work. So currently, this is our login page. This is our home page. We don't see our detail page. I removed the link because right now it's not that important. We will get there. Now, by the way, uh, a couple of streams, uh, somebody had a question when they looked the code at my Strappy. They said that the URL for the images was looking different than what I use. And I completely forgot to mention as a habit when I set up Strappy out of the box, I like to use a third party uh, service to manage. Uh, my images so I ended up using Cloudinary and so as you could see some of these images you see are uh, they're not hosted um, at my strappy local or not local but deployed uh, kind of data not database but within the strappy actual file folder and I'm actually hosting images somewhere else because I don't want my folder to grow which has a Strappy app every time someone uploads new images. So I'm using a third party CDN, uh, Cloudinary, it's amazing. And so if you're interested, um, just search Cloudinary and I post it on the Discord, uh, by the way, the articles that I use, you could actually get this NPM package, Strappy provider upload to Cloudinary. That's what's gonna get you set up with Cloudinary functionality in Strappy. And then there's this adding, um, you know, how to add Cloudinary to your Strappy app. Uh, pretty simple to be honest. I'll show you the code here. Let me see here. Actually, I didn't. Did I not pull the strappy thing? Hold on. Let me pull the strappy here to this window back end here. There you go. But it's pretty simple. You basically just, once you install the plugin, like super simple, you literally just uh, create a plugins folder and you add this basically file here with the settings and you, you know, put your Cloudinary name, your key, your secret that I'm storing in NV file, but that's gonna be, you know, based on what your name is and Cloudinary key is. And then in terms of that's what you add in the back end, and from the front end, I mean, not the front end, but from the actual Strapi application, you know, you'll be able to easily, um, actually, let me see plugins here. This is gonna show up here. Yes, yeah, really that plugin doesn't show up in the plugins here, but it is installed here. And whenever you, and I'll show you kind of here, if I go to 
you know, projects, I'll just take any one. Like you see this image, I could click, you know, add another image and whatever I upload here, it's going to upload to Cloudinary. So it's going to show up um, here. You see like the same images that I have in my application. You see here, they're basically being hosted by Cloudinary. And that's a good way to do it because it's just a good way to kind of have a place to store your images. I guess they also do videos and stuff like that without bloating your application, like, right, um, you know, because our backend that's deployed, we just want to make sure the code that makes the application function, but we don't want it to work as like a storage container where whenever you guys upload images, it constantly will bloat that application. I guess for small sites, it's okay. For us, not so much. So that's what I did. So if you guys were wondering. So now we're going to continue with this. So we're working on the login and we basically want to make sure that we incorporate our form to be able to um, work. So the first change we want to do is make sure that uh, whenever you work with GraphQL, whenever you work, you have this concept of authenticated user, right? And the uh, authentic user, they should not be able to delete stuff that's not theirs, or they shouldn't be able to have access to private content if that content is not available to them. And the way that in the most simplest way, we allow our application to know that we are logged in user is every time we pass a request, we pass it with a, with a JWT token, which basically will allow us to get the data if we are authorized. And so I could show you a quick example here. First thing I'm gonna do like right now, I'll just show you here, uh, check this out. Right now, when you log into our homepage, it's gonna work fine because this view, like to be able to see people's portfolios, that's a public endpoint. What I'm going to do right now in the application, make it private, it's just to kind of show you how it's going to break things here. So if I go to settings and Strapi, which is cool, Strapi has a lot of this out of the box. So right now, for public access, we are able to get our projects, we're able to get a find one, like, you know, the count and find all of them. If I, you know, take away, you know, dot find here and save it, it's gonna break our application because it's no longer uh, public. So if I go back here and I try to reload, it's gonna say an error and the error is probably gonna be like, you're not uh, allowed to access uh, something network here. Let me re refresh. So GraphQL worked, but we still get an error because we don't get any data. Um, and eventually I'll put some sort of error on the screen uh, there's going to be like, okay, I guess it doesn't show it here, but it will put an error. But the, the reason why we don't have access to this is because we made it private. So in order to get access to the private information, we have to pass a uh, token. And one good way to test it here, this is the GraphQL playground. This is where you're able to test your queries, test whatever. So let me actually go back to Strapi here, and I'm going to make sure that we could only see the portfolios if we are authenticated users, just to kind of show you by example here, and then I'll put everything back. So we're going to, yeah, I already have it set up as you could see with authentication a user. And so before you code, you could actually test out this functionality like pretty easily in your uh, GraphQL playground. So I went ahead, actually, damn, I'm not even sharing my screen anymore. What a lunatic I am. So. Basically, what I did is I went into Strapi and I made uh, projects private so you're no longer able to see them here because we're not authenticated, so we can't see the content um, just for the sake of this example. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, and GraphQL here, you could think of it as uh, Postman. If you guys use Postman, it's just more keen for like GraphQL. So what I could do here is I could uh, Go to our Strapi documentation. It kind of shows if you want to authenticate um, to the Strapi application, you would run this mutation. So what I'm going to go ahead, do, and copy it, and I'm going to show you how it works. So I'm going to go into GraphQL here. I'm going to paste the mutation here. And right now I'm just going to hard code because I think, uh, let me just double check uh, the users here. Yeah, coding after 30 at Gmail. Yep, that's the one. Uh, for now, I'm just going to hard code this stuff to make it easier. Coding after 30. 
at gmail.com. So this is what our form is going to pass. It's going to, God damn it. Our form is going to pass this information. It's going to run this mutation. And I'll show you how to set all this up. I just want to show you this by example currently. And password, don't laugh, it's test user. And now when I hit click here, and by the way, in GraphQL, this is what we want to pass to GraphQL. And the second area is what we're going to return back. So what are we going to do? Um, and hold on a second. I think I have to fix my internet for a second. I'll be up in a moment. All right, bad hair day. It's okay. Um, I had. I'm just kind of like, man, my connection here. I have to make sure I always do it wired. So let me quickly uh, take care of that before we continue here. Because um, my Wi-Fi is terrible, terrible. I'm amazed that so far things didn't break. Uh, but we're gonna keep it up. We're gonna keep going. Um, anyway, don't be shy. Say hello in the comments. I see hologram nunchuck saying what's up. We have. The dev life. What's up, man? Great tutorial. Thank you, man. I really appreciate all your compliments. I'm just some dude who uh, are we still live. I might have broke my live stream. Let me know. Thumbs up if we're good to go. Did I break it? Did I break it? Let me know, guys. We have KitKat here. KitKat. Hey, what's up? How's it going? You got this. Hamza the code here. Good. Man, let me guys know if I broke anything. I think we're back on. Back on. I had to switch my internet to get things working anyway anyway back to the thing now so what we're going to work on is hooking up our thanks uh we're all good hooking up our graphql and so this is basically we first going to test the query we basically querying a mutation which is basically allows us and thanks hologram nine checks allows us to uh, authenticate with strappy so when i click play here we basically check this out we get our uh back well actually hold on let me a second let me do this id because i want to return the user uh you could actually ask for more things to return id so let me run that again so notice how we get back jw token something that we need and we get the user id so now if i want to see those posts that i'm no longer able to see because they're private i need to make sure that i pass this token into my request so i'll do a new request HTTP headers here, and I think like we need to do bearer. Actually, I have to look that up. I keep forgetting what to pass. Passing bearer token GraphQL playground. See, a lot of times when you don't know what to do, guys, just Google it. Uh, you know, and hopefully you find it. Like, let's see here. Oh, here we go. You type authorization a bearer and you insert your token which will pass that token into your request so let's go ahead and try that so we go authorization i don't know how to spell but we'll see and then we'll pass bearer also don't know how to spell i think that's all i need to do ah damn it i keep switching screens with my mouse and now we're gonna query our um and again, if you're not familiar with GraphQL, that's okay. We'll learn it as we go along. But now I'm gonna query our uh, projects. And so now we wanna get IDs, we wanna get uh, get like, uh, let's feature the image. I think we have a title, we have for put a name, name and description doesn't like me for whatever reason what is it complaining oh it's projects I don't want to get one I want to get multiple projects and feature image let's featured image what what do we have the URL get the URL so now when I hit play notice all this works and the reason why it works is because we just passed our token to authenticate us as a logged in user so basically, that's exactly what we're going to do on the front end. First thing we're going to do is create a mutation like we have here that we're going to send to our back end to authenticate through Strapi. That's going to return our JW token, like we mentioned before, here. 
that we're gonna pass to our application on the front end, and then we'll be able to see anything that we're not supposed to see or see that's basically you're only able to see as an authorized user. For now though, I'm gonna go back to the way I had it first here. And for that initial homepage, we want everybody to be able to see the posts. Everybody wanna see the projects, right? So we wanna make it public. So I'm gonna save it for the time being and go from here. So if I refresh now, I broke everything again. Oh, I see. I see settings. Fine. We need likes. It wasn't getting the likes back. So here we go. All right. So now everything works. So now what we're going to do, we're basically going to work on setting up that example that I just showed you, that authentication. And hey, have a good night, KitKat. Great seeing you. Um, you could always see these on reruns. You know, we're here for you guys always. So now we're going to work on login. So the first thing we're going to do is continue working on this form. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this uh, function here. And what we need to do here, we need to set up some sort of logic that's going to fire, you know, some code that's going to make the authentication work through our strappy backend. And we're going to do that by using exactly that mutation I just showed you. So, you know, that's what we're going to do. And let's kind of get started with this. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to know that we have to make a mutation and our mutation is going to be very similar to what we saw, except we're going to pass our arguments into our mutation. So I'm going to write our mutation here, const. I'm going to call it login user because that's what's going to fire and it's going to be equal to GQL which is something we get from GraphQL, which we have to import. And that's where our mutation is going to go. I'm just looking at the comments here. Oh, no, we're good. And by the way, anytime you guys have questions, just ask, let me know. Like I'm here to talk about all this stuff uh, that we're doing. So let me import GQL here. And this is from our Apollo library that we installed here. We want GQL and then we also want use mutation um, and then we're gonna yep and so that's from at Apollo Apollo client so now we have access to that so now we're gonna write our query and it's basically going to be our mutation and it's exactly similar where where we go here? Let me refresh this. Oh yeah. Where was it? Where was it? In the playground. It's that it's literally gonna be exactly like this login mutation. The only thing we're gonna do is we're going to pass some arguments to replace this. So we're able to pass arguments programmatically. So that's what we're gonna keep uh, kind of working. I could actually copy this. And then we could edit it. Let me just copy this whole mutation. Control copy. Go back to our code editor. Because you know that's what we're going to be doing. Copy pasting is good. As long as you know what it is. And so we're. So now what we need to do. We got to make sure that we replace these. With. Um, you know our. Variables here. Hey MA. Good to see you. How's it going? You know, I, I like how everybody's jumping in. Like, I know these streams are n like not going to be watched by many because, you know, like just because like nobody wants to like watch somebody code. It's not that exciting. You know what I mean? Like people want to be entertained. And, you know, I try to do a little bit of this, but I am committed to working through my portfolio live. So you guys could see that consistency will pay off over time. And that's kind of what we're going to do. Um, and so what we want to do here is, by the way, when we're passing variables and you're like, I'm not sure like what to type here. What's cool here is that you could click the docs and you could look up the mutation you're looking for. Like we're looking for mutation and we're looking to, what are we looking to do? Login. 
And so you click on it, it opens up and it shows you what it needs. It needs uh, user permission payload, which requires, no, that's what we return. I apologize. We need user permission login input. And that's going to be our payload. That's what we're going to need to pass into our, basically into our application here. So I copied from there. I go back to my react code and I'll just put it here. So we are going to be passing users that I not copied it all the way. Playground. Oh, users with a capital because we need to have access to that uh, variable and user permission. So that's what we're going to pass here. And so this should be okay. We could test that out here. Now we're going to basically write our using the use mutation hook. We're going to create this. Um, hold on a second. I see some comments. I want to make sure that I always get to your comments. Hologram nunchucks. What's your preferred method to creating a model with React? I made one with uh, portals and wraps, but I discovered an NPM package called React Modal. Not sure which technique to use. So you could use whatever works for you. I first make my model like from scratch, kind of on my own, just using use state and whatever and CSS in React. Uh, but if uh, there's nothing wrong with finding other libraries uh, to be able to use, especially if you need something that not a simple model like. I made for my own application. And so here we go. So let's name our mutation. I am like not doing this correctly. We're going to come back to that in a second. We're going to call our mutation login. And this goes here. This is like the hardest part about like. Uh, talking on stream and being able to do stuff and yep this is gonna be input location and then here this is where we uh, uh, we show we point to our input and we use it here so for our login we're just gonna do input and we're gonna point it to the input that we used above as our variable and we're basically going to continue here. And actually, this has to be same. So basically, the way this works is whatever we call here in our code is going to be passed to our login mutation here to work. And we are basically could delete this because that's what we're doing in the above statement here. And hologram not checks what you're So that, Oh, yeah. And... Thanks, man. Sorry, I have ping uh, some second behind. Oh, no worries, my man. No worries. So we're going to continue writing this query. And by the way, like, let's say I'm messing up right now. I have no idea what I'm doing here. You could write this whole query like we did um, in our GraphQL pre playground. And that's kind of like the easiest way to do it. Instead of me messing up here, right, I could write this uh, mutation here. I'm just going to copy and Oh, oh. Uh, mutation mutation we could just write it here I'm gonna call it login mutation and what's cool about here this gives you some sort of like uh, code correctiveness if you need help so I want to have an input and this input let me go here and this input is going to be our user permissions. Yeah, I like how like whenever I do stuff on stream, like like everything never works. Everything breaks as always. Uh, things always like, no, this is not what you need to do. This is not how it works. You know, it's like, what the hell's happening? What the hell's happening? It's like, you know, like, why am I messing up here? So we have our mutation and we want to use, what's the name of this? Use the documentation here. We want to use login, login. Okay, we're making progress. We're making progress. Okay, here we go. 
and it's complaining again what's it complaining about we'll figure it out guys so let me give our mutation a name login mutation and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass our arguments here which is gonna be our input And what's good, like once you write it here, we'll literally be able to copy and paste it. And we want to use login input here. Copy from there. Boom. Nice. That's uh, starting to look better. And we want to make sure we reference the input with our input above. Okay. And now what we want to do is basically return what we want to get back. We want to get back the JWT token and then we want to get back some basic user information like the username and the ID. Okay, man, that took forever. Now for this to work, by the way, we need to uh, pass this input variable and in GraphQL Playground, you could do it here. So you do input and then the input is going to be exactly what this is expecting. And so we could look at the documentation here. Uh, it's expecting identifier and password. So it's going to look like this. And I'll kind of hard code it right now just to show you how it works. So let's go back to our app. The roundabout way of kind of getting to where we need to go. And this is kind of like the real thing when you're coding on your own. Like things are going to break. They're going to look like this. The struggle is going to be real. But you know what? Someone's got to code. Who's going to code for you if you guys uh, don't code? Like, you know, who's going to do the work for you? How are you going to get better at uh, coding if you're not doing what you're supposed to do? And I think this has got to be quotes. I'm just guessing here. And password's got to be quotes, I think. Um, yeah, that making progress. And so let me plug in my... Uh, password here we could close this window we don't need it here and then plug in my email nope it should be in quotes and things will always like break but if you're not afraid like i mean if you're afraid you know what's gonna happen if my code doesn't work what's gonna happen i'm gonna be embarrassed I'm gonna, like, how are you gonna make progress you gotta try stuff out so now i hit play and bam that works we get the response that we need so now we know this mutation is legit we know this mutation work and i could copy and paste it from my graphql playground instead of like messing around here like i was doing before now i know that this mutation works boom i just post it in here and it's good to know good to go good to go good to go so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to now write the code to be able to call this mutation. But to do that, we have to use the use mutation hook to make stuff happen for us. Basically what's gonna happen when we fire a login form, we're gonna use the use mutation hook that's going to basically allow us to make this request and get the data back. So let's set that mutation up and we're gonna use our trusty use mutation here. Uh, let's see we want to make sure we do it inside the component so this stuff is outside the component we are inside the component so let's uh, do it here by the way if you guys have questions about anything you know I'm looking at the comments here you know the comments kind of shy probably because only like few of you guys watching that's okay you know what I mean I don't care how many people watch I'm gonna keep doing my project you know what I mean I'm gonna keep building this portfolio live with you guys because I want to make sure that the most important part here is that we're all getting to a point where you understand that it's not the tutorials that are going to get you hired. It's the work that you do on your own. So I'm not trying to be embarrassed. Like I want to be embarrassed. I want to be, you know, like kind of like making mistakes live and having people laugh at me. But at the end of the day, guess what I'm doing? I'm coding. I'm struggling. I'm solving problems. I'm going through this. So this is where we're going to use are we gonna give our mutation login mutation we're gonna give it a name and uh, basically this array that we're expecting to be passing into a login mutation uh, that we're gonna get back from it and we're also going to get back uh, a couple of states we get error if there's an error and then we also uh, get data which we're not going to use here but it is available there we're going to use it somewhere else and it also gets our 
loading loading so something is loading it will be like loading it's true or it already loaded it'll say false so for now we're just gonna use uh, this error and loading and that's gonna be coming from our use use mutation hook and this is going to be um, past our login user query and when this happens right we want to make sure that you know we get like a callback function so we could fi like we could either change the state we could save our user to our contacts api that we're going to do so th and this is all you could get through the documentation uh, but we are able to pass an object here and one of the options could be i believe it's uncompleted yeah and uncompleted we basically pass a function and inside that function we put the code that we want to fire so i know we'll be getting data and what do we want to happen uh, uh like what this happens so let's say console log i'll do an alert just so like you guys see it uh pop up actually i'll do console log why not and we're just going to first take a look at the data, what we get. And I'm going to tell you the data is going to be that JW token and the username and the ID that we passed before. And we're also going to set that to state because we want to make sure that we have that information. So we're going to do set user. Actually, this is going to be done with contact. So let's kind of forget that for now. Let's just implement this, make sure that, that works. So we created our login mutation we have a callback function that's gonna do something right now it's gonna look console log our data and i'm gonna do put a comment here after callback okay that's great and then what we want to do is we want to call that here when the form is submitted so that's what we're going to do we're going to call our our login mutation and this mutation basically gets the parameters that we need and we have to pass it in the way that it ex uh, expects it so this is just commonality for um, graphql you pass it as variables and then here you guys will see that this is going to match exactly and i'll kind of do it here that we used here it's going to be this format we want the input which is going to have and i'll just copy and paste it here the password and everything else here boom so let me go here S control shift f to make it look pretty so it's going to get our input and this input basically refers to our input here so that's how we're passing our variables from our form into our graphql query now by the way if this sounds like confusing and it's tough and you guys are trying to make sense of it that's okay guys like ask questions i don't mind taking time off and going on attention and talking about what we're doing discussing the technology but you know but basically from the big picture of the things of what we want to do is we want to basically uh pass some variables into our query that will have our password from the form and i mean our email and password from the form and the way i saved it i saved it as input dot password in state so if you see here i have my my state here input set input so that's coming from the, so once we enter the information the form is gonna hit like fire unchange handle input change our handle input change basically saves the data from the form into state and now we're accessing the state here via input password and then via input email so the moment of truth here when i so and now what we want to do we want to make sure that we utilize here error and loading and we want something to happen when um it either succeeds or it doesn't so for now we're going to create two if statements here and the first if statement is going to be like if there's uh you know if it's loading i didn't you know
we want to showcase some sort of loader and right now i'm going to because we're using react bootstrap react bootstrap has this spinner component is it two ends i don't know and that's what we're going to kind of pass so while it's loading it's going to showcase us our awesome spinner and you could push different props here we're going to give it animation grow so it's like a dot that grows up and down um, it should be what am i doing it should be equal Ugh, i can't type under pressure my keyboard's on fire so it's complaining that spinner doesn't exist and it's because we have to import it from react bootstrap here so i'll just add it here and put spinner and we're probably not going to see the spinner because once we have a user we're actually going to redirect to our home page and I'm, we're going to do it here we also want to put if error and then this is loading and errors coming from uh, here. You see, it's coming from our use mutation. That provides us the state that our call is in. And so if error, for now, we're not going to do anything exciting. We're just going to return. And what am I doing here? It's got to be, you can't return stuff without typing return, you fool. So we got to put return here. And here we're just going to return an H1. Arr. You know that's gonna be our error and then what we want to do though right now our user we want to store our user in context we don't have that yet we're gonna do that in a second but I'm gonna write this here which is gonna get from context if there's a user that means that we successfully logged in we want to redirect somewhere and this redirect comes from our react router dom which is something that i talked about in previous uh, podcasts so i want to import redirect component and that's from our react router you could find the documentation by searching react router dom and it's going to pull up this beautiful page and you say, I want to do web, and it's going to kind of show you everything you need to learn about React Router here. Um, you know, so this is basically like if you see me do anything with React Routers, like we did an earlier podcast, I basically used this uh, guide, uh, this documentation. So as you're learning, you know, you got to read the documentation. See here, redirect. This shows an example of using redirect. I'm actually going to copy it here just to show you that that's how I do stuff. I look at the documentation copy and paste and we want it to redirect to our home page which is basically this like currently a user doesn't exist and we're going to add context here in a second but for now we, let's just test our login screen and we have a console log here after callback we should be getting our data and we should like which will have a jwt token and we'll have a user so it's the first like great step to work and start and by the way guys if you haven't smashed the like button smash the like button just for the sake that you're here and you're putting up with me and if you have any comments guys why you guys think i'm doing these live streams so i'm not lonely and i could talk to you guys so don't keep me lonely say some things in the comments i really appreciate it like we want to make this engaging <laughs> not just for you guys but for me as well i got no friends sorry you guys should be my friends Yep. Anyway, so moving on, let's test it out. It's probably going to break, and that's the whole beauty of it. So we go to our React application. User is not defined. Of course, user is not defined. A bunch of other things are broken. So the trusty, musty, it's complaining about this GraphQL. Did I not import it? I did import it. GraphQL. This is. Just listen carefully, man. Lucky. Thanks, man. Um, anytime you have questions about anything, let me know. Uh, let me comment that out. Why is it complaining about this? This is le legit, as legit as it could be. Do I have extra brackets here? Maybe. I do. Mm, let's move. Ah, where's that button to move it over? Yep. So let's see, we have the bracket here. A lot of times that's what happens. You get too many goddamn bra brackets. I think that's kind of what's happening here. Yeah, I might've had too many brackets here. So let's go back to our code. I, I make that all the time, you know, extra brackets. 
for everybody. Now this works. Look at this. We got our form showing. Now the moment of truth is to see, are we going to get back our JW token and our user? Um, nice. Everybody's enjoying this so far. Hey, guys, but love talking to you in the chat. So lots of love. So let's see what happens if we type random email that's incorrect, which is this one, and then random password, sign in. So we submit our form. Response not successful. The reason why it's showing this ugly error is because I did not do any GraphQL error handling. That's something you kind of have to uh, take in mind, which we will do later. Right now, we're not, we not worried about like the little nice to haves. We're more worried about getting the basic functionality to work. So what happens if I do um, here and provide the right password and hit sign in, okay? Response not successful. So that's not the error that I thought I was going to get. So this is where the troubleshooting comes in. You kind of try to figure out why the thing didn't work, what's broken. We get network error and you get these headaches and you just want to bang your head. Like those of you guys who are looking to get into web development and building stuff, like welcome to like, like the worst moments of headaches in your life that you're going to get. So I see here that this is empty. This should be passing our variables. I'm not sure why it's not passing our goddamn variables into our code. Like we said it that it should. So let's figure that out. So let's troubleshoot this. So we need to pass identifier, input email, input. Like this looks legit. Like do I have too many brackets here too? Like, cause it makes no sense. Login mutation, that's what we're working on. Yeah, like this is what you guys are tuning in. You're tuning in to watch me scratch my head, try to make sense of like what is happening and why things are not working. Maybe I copied and pasted from my GraphQL query. No, I copied and pasted from my GraphQL program. So but this is a interesting. Hold on a second. So in Playground, this is the exact same thing we did. It works. Hmm. Which is the exact same thing we did. We tested it already, but it doesn't work here. I wonder if I need to allow permission to like that. No, that should be out of the box. I don't understand why it's complaining. But let, let's take a look. Let's so if you guys see something I don't see, you could definitely let me know. Uh, but we'll work through it. We'll, we'll work through it. Let's, let's work through it here. Mm -hmm. What could it be? That looks so correct. Sometimes like you do things, they look so correct and they are correct. Like, you know, this is exactly what we're passing, right? This is what I copied from our previous screen without too many, without too many uh, brackets here. So very, did I misspell variables? Could have done. Let's see, let's, let's go back, try this again. Let's go back to our application. Like, look, beautiful, it works here like it's expected to work. Identifier, coding after, yeah, 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 yeah. Go here. Let's log in. I wanna do coding after 30, super secret password, test user, sign in, GraphQL. Ah, oh, I must have mistyped variable. I must have. So, yep, I must have mistyped variables because now it's passing here. See, the most mistakes you guys are gonna have is goddamn misspelling variables. Like, this is just so insane. But now we should be able to see our console log that we did. And look what our console log has. This is after our callback, kind of like what we discussed. And what we got back here is we got a login, we got our JW token. We got a user, and now what we want to do is we want to save this into contacts. And the reason why, like AP, uh, contacts uh, API in React, where you could have easy way to share state with other components. And so that's what we're going to do next. But before we do that, let's take a look at the code and review. Dude, I got ha already hacked. Yeah, 100%, 100% hacked, like all day, every day. Uh, 
but anyway let's kind of review what we did here so we wrote our query this is basically graphql speak and we created this here that refers to our input variable that we're going to pass that's going to be passed to our uh, login query or mutation i should say to be more correct then we used our use mutation hook that's provided by apollo graphql and we passed in our login user query here and then we make sure to call a callback right and that's why you saw the data that you just saw because it fired a callback and it showed us the data that it got as a response now to make it work we created our function to handle submit form when we submit the form on click that we saw before and we passed in our login mutation from above right this dude that we wrote uh, this dude we passed it in, we passed our input, and now the form gets submitted, it works. Great job, Paul, you did it. Just kidding, we did it. Hologram nunchucks, let me take a breather from all this coding to answer some of your wonderful questions. So, do you keep any sort of state in the app component? It makes things easier for me, but it re-renders components that don't need to be re-rendered. Yeah, 100%, and so that's why we're going to, uh, like, it, so you need to keep state as close to the component as possible exactly for that reason that you mentioned. So for instance, if you have state that's in the root, your app component, and then you have like four or five levels deep, you're passing that state down, right? And whenever that change in state is triggered, it's going to be rendered the top component that holds that state. So this is where, you know, with less complex uh, applications, that becomes very important to think about should we use something like Redux. Um, and in our case, we're going to use um, uh, the context API to allow us to kind of share state of different components. And that's kind of going to be one little thing that you could do to avoid some of that uh, necessary rendering because you're passing the state directly to the component that needs it and we're actually going to do that next but also with graphql graphql is also a way to manage state so for instance notice how we were five and it'll be more apparent actually in our other app uh, where is it where is it i'll show it to you later but where we're getting data uh, with graphql what's cool like when i get that data i don't have to create state and store that data in state because graphql has its own state management but in terms of like what you're doing what you want to do is make sure not have like all your state be in your parent application. Like you basically want it to be as close to the component that needs it. Like for instance, um, this is like a terrible example, but I'm going to say it here. Like for instance, I created this input state and set input state, which is local to my form component because this is where it needs to live. Not saying that I can't declare this in the top level app and then pass it down. But every time I would call it from here, it would re-render all the branches that it's touching. So basically what you want to think about, you know, unless you need to have global state, um, either store it in contacts or Redux, or store your state as close to the component that utilizes it, if it makes sense, like my answer. If not, ask more questions, I'll clear up. So now what we're going to do, we need to be able to save this user. We want to save this user in our contacts. We want to make sure that that user is available in, to all of our different places that we want to put it. You know what I'm saying? So this is why we're going to set up our user contacts. That's you could you could call it whatever you like. You could call it like doohickey contacts. We're gonna call it user contacts. So what I'm gonna do here in my application. I just realized I wasn't even sharing my screen again, like stupid idiot that I am. So we come back here. Anyway, I didn't show anything too important, but now we went over the code a few minutes ago. Now we're going to start here. So let me make this uh, bigger for a second, just for a second, hot second here. What I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to close all this stuff down and we're going to go into source, create a new folder. We're going to call it context. And inside that folder, we're going to create a new file. Let's call it the user contacts. 
because you could have more than one contacts by the way guys you don't have to try to stick everything i know some people will create uh contacts and then they put all of their global state in it you can uh not recommend it and so let's kind of start doing our code and by the way whenever you guys ever lost of what you're doing guess what i'm going to say go to trusty google google and find use context react like hook react in react and just find some articles use context so, you know like and it shows you all the hooks it just read through it uh, i have to find it somewhere hooks api search use context god damn I, I told you what to find what are you complaining you here use context and it kind of shows you how to use it some tips it shows you examples how they use it so don't be shy don't be afraid using the documentation because um, there's nothing wrong with that so back to our code we're going to write this down so what do we need we need to import by the way if you're using like the super new uh react you don't have to declare react uh, i just do it out of habit uh, but what do we need to pull? We want to pull create create context. And then after create context, we want to get use effect. And then after use it, because we're going to use use effect. And then we want to get use state. What are we going to use use effect, guys? I'm going to tell you, super secret. But what I want to do, I want to make sure that we also save our context to uh, local storage. Why? Because whenever we refresh our application we don't want to lose our state right we want to make sure that we have access to it so saying that we don't haven't used react that's okay so next thing we're going to do we're going to first create our context and i think we go const we're going to call it user context user context represent in the house and we're going to use the helpful create context um what you call it a hook that they provide and we're going to set it to null so that's kind of what it is it's null and what am i doing what am i doing paul what are you doing that's it that's all you need that's all she wrote for that part now we have to create our user provider you could call it whatever you want you could call it cupcakes and teddy bears provider but we're gonna do a default export and we're going to create a normal function we're gonna call it user provider just so we know what it does we assume it's contacts and this oh my god and it's gonna be our wrapper we're gonna wrap our full application with this to allow us to have access to our context so we know that we want to pass children all my children and then we're gonna basically just return and this comes by the way from the contacts uh, API so when you read on it you guys are gonna see it but what we want to return we want to return user contacts dot provider this is just something you do this you have to kind of whatever you name the thing you have to do dot provider so once you call this you want to have a bunch of methods available to this and provider is one of them so you got to make sure that you always do it uh like this and then in here we're going to pass our children because we're wrapping our application with this component and we just want to pass all the children in it and the provider here takes in a value and this value is going to be our uh, user uh, and and we'll also call it not user event user why that self-correct like that and set user you're wondering where is that user and set user coming from and well, let me make it smaller you guys probably like oh what 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 that's not what i typed i typed set user what are you doing and by the way because we want to return an object don't forget to put the object brackets here so this user doesn't exist yet because this is where our use state comes in we're going to set up that state we're going to say const uh user 
and set user. Boom. Learn to spell, Paul. And we want to use use state. And right now that uh, state is. What are you? What are you complaining about? Stop. Stop complaining. Oh. Idiot. It has to be inside the component. So use state. And for now, uh, use state for the minute. For a minute, it's going to be nothing. So we're not going to worry about it. And then I did mention that we want to make sure that we're able to set our user, let's say, to local storage. So that will allow us to refresh our page and not lose that information, that data. We'll do that in just a minute. For now, what we're going to do, uh, we are going to just test this out. So right now, our state, let's just say it's null, whatever. And now what I want to do is, first of all, make sure it works. So we don't need this use event. So the first thing we're going to do is hook up our application to work with our provider. So we need to go to our app.js and we need to import import user provider and we want to wrap our application actually I don't want to do the in app JS I lied to you guys you can do it in index JS in the most hold on a second I'm in the wrong folder blah 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 app JS index JS right here so we're gonna see how we have our by the way the Apollo provider hook or component kind of like we're doing here does the same thing you see Apollo provider here boom it wraps the components and it's returning the client which is basically provider to the client we're basically doing the same thing here except we're doing it with our context user context that I call it no I didn't call it user context I called it user provider Boom. Nice. And we want to wrap our application with this user provider. And then make sure we auto format with using prettier. And so we are pulling our user provider from our contacts. We're wrapping our application with it so we have access to it. That will allow us to basically use use contacts hook from wherever we want. So what we want to do now is just kind of make sure that everything works. Does our application still work? So let's see here. Let's go back here. We made a bunch of changes. Fail to compile. Use concept JS does not match corresponding file on a disk. User context. So, oh, I see because I misspelled it. I it should be you want to make sure that your component names uh, here. Let's see here where we have Apollo, uh, Apollo, 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 Apollo. Context. User context JS. How did I import it here? Let's go to our. Uh, we were in index.jsx. I have too many things. Let me close this one. Index.jsx. Oh, idiot. It's user with a capital use. All right, let's refresh. All right, so this still works. We still don't have access to the contacts, but I mean, we do. So let's kind of put it into action by using our use contacts and use it in our login form. So we're going to go back to our login form here. Let me close this. Let me close this. Close this login form. Here we are. Let me make the screen. By the way, if you guys chat with me, I'm feeling lonely. Ask questions, ask whatever. So. Now what we're going to do, we created context. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go import. Uh, what am I lying to you guys? I'm going to not import yet. I'm going to call the use context hook. Oh my God, my computer just doesn't like me. And then within our component, we're going to that use contacts hook will allow us to pull out our user and set user function that we define in our context. 
use con oh my god jesus christ autocorrect on my keyboard is killing me but for this to work number one a reimporting use context csvr or is it complaining here use kind of cannot be called top look at this the it has to be inside the component you idiot log in here so boom let me know if my text is too big let me bring it down i think that's why i'm getting confused so now for uh, this needs to know what context we need so we need to pass inside here our user contacts that we uh created there's definitely a part one in the series i made a new playlist here on youtube and i'll have to add it to my channel um uh, and I will do that, but there's a part one. Um, I'll find it. I'll put it. I'll put it in the Discord, by the way. If you guys are on Discord, here, I'll share the link uh, with you guys so you guys could join us on Discord too. There is a link there uh, somewhere. And I'll get that going for you. Sorry, I did put in a playlist on YouTube. Hold on a second. Let me just go to our YouTubes. YouTubes, YouTubes. YouTube. Coding after 30, your channel. Um, customize channel. Add a section. Single playlist. Single playlist. How to build the web. I don't know why there's only six videos. We're like on episode nine. I'm secretly think like uh youtube secretly deleting my videos okay so we've let's go to back to youtube let's see if that did anything so if you go to my channel and now you should be able to i don't know why i called it uploads no this is kind of what's happening now but it's showing all the no 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 hold on a second where did i add it i did add it god damn it anyway not to waste too much time i will add a section here after the stream today which will have all the past uh streams for you guys to watch so uh i thought it would be easy i don't want to deter anyway back at the context so we need to pass a context here so let's go ahead and import our import our use use user you user <laughs> i can't spell it. context from word why you not why not auto completing this uh let me let me try something here i don't remember what folder it was in user Did I export it? Did I export? Where, where are we at? It's in. I did. I know we exported it. I'm not that. I mean, I was gonna say I'm not that stupid. That's uh, up to debate. User context. I did call it export. Con oh, you idiot! It's a named expert. Expert. Not. Oh no, I am doing named. Import in path why is it not not showing my path from I, I i really don't like this that my path is not working let me see if my plugins path oh obviously you need to install the favorite plugin that's always works path intellisense amazing plugin look you guys learn about it today you probably use it anyway so now it should allow me to make it a little bit easier See, look at that in beautiful IntelliSense. If we go to contacts, user contacts JS, and now we pass this into our contacts. So now this user and set user, it's coming from our contacts. Let me uh, find that file for you guys. I think you could do control P and type the name of the file you want. Beautiful work. So that 
user and set user it's coming from our contacts that's where the state lives it lives in our contacts that's how we're able to share the state in various places so now i could come back here and do this thing here if user redirect us to our logged in page and more importantly we want to set our user to state and where we're going to do that we're going to do that in our callback function so we're going to run set user here and we're going to save it as an object because i want to have access to this because i'm going to uh, want to save the token to use for whatever we need to use it for for our uh, authentication that we're about to finish about to finish but for now we're working on it so we want to save the token and that's going to be coming bin from data actually let me destructure that let me go here above now we know this works we could remove this console log let me uh const data i guess it doesn't matter i don't have to destructure but you can't destructure things i mean login it's called login that's kind of what we're getting back so instead of me typing data.login i'm just gonna type in login uh but i guess this seems that this is more typing anyway, but whatever. So login dot, uh, is it token? No, it's JWT. And this is coming from our return object that we saw. And then I'm also going to store user ID for us here. And that's gonna come from our user dot, I login dot user dot ID. How is my autocorrect like keeps fighting me every freaking way. This is so annoying user ID and we're going to get it from login dot user I believe dot ID I believe that's what it is don't forget your comment here so in theory now what's going to happen when we submit our form it's going to hit this callback function that we passed and it's going to set our state with this user that's going to trigger an update if we have user it's actually going to take us and redirect us to our uh, to our home page so let's see if that's going to work so here we are user provider is defined but never used uh, we're login form user provide oh i imported user provider for some apparent reason that's not yeah, that's. Did I hold on a second? User context. I want to import user context. Such an idiot. Import. I thought I did it. You know what I mean? In import import user context from our uh, context user context okay that should work that should not complain if it complains i'm sorry guys i don't know what i'm doing half the time oh it works so now we know this works because when i so i'm home right now we have our cool data here this works great we'll get to this use effect stop complaining we go to login we put coding after 30 test user. Now the expected behavior here is that this is gonna set our contacts with the user and it's gonna redirect us to our homepage. So fingers crossed. I love it. Farisa Rx, good luck. Yes, let's test it. Sign in. Okay, form submitted. Ah, it didn't work. Why? Something messed up happened. So, this is why we have the stream, to watch me troubleshoot and bang our head. This looks weird, obviously guys, obviously. <sighs> you are returning stuff here, you are returning stuff here. You gotta return this component for it to work you moron. Now, we try this again. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. Color-based thumbnails. So I try to keep my color like to uh, orange as like my kind of like theme color. But I think like and so the image is different. So any image that you see with sunglasses, that's pertaining to this live stream. But I guess I should make some sort of color coordination. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll definitely give it some thought and try to implement it for next time. Uh, okay, so test two. Let's see here. We go to login. Fresh, go to login. So test two. Same type of video to have same color. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. I'll have to definitely do that for sure. Like live is a certain color. My regular video is a certain color. Yeah, I'll definitely take your advice for my next thumbnails. So let's check it out. Thank you for recommending that test. No, it's coding after 30 test user by the way this user that i'm using it's a user in our application uh if i go into users i have coding after 30 it's a user in our application that's the guy and so it's an actual user that exists in our back end and so we authenticate it as an existing user so form submitted moment of truth boom redirect it redirect it we redirect it and now check this out if you go back to login it doesn't let you because you're already logged in what's the point of going back to the login so what we could do is if logged in we could hide the user uh because there's no reason to have a i mean login button there's no you reason having a logged in button if you're already logged in so we could handle that by using our dandy use contacts and this is by the way one of the benefits of using contacts otherwise i would have had to prop trail i would have had to find like a parent component to have the state but now we have that state on our contacts and so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my navigation component top nav here you know we have this login button and we basically want to say if no user which we'll pull in from our contacts in just a second uh then show our login so basically, if there's no user, I'm seriously like, don't, oh yeah, it's complaining there's no user because you have to pull from context. But basically this, what this is going to do, it's going to say, okay, there's no user, let's show the login. If there's a user, don't show the login. So let's uh, pull our context. So we're going to use the use contacts hook. God, this self-correcting nonsense, it's so aggravating. And then we're going to pull from our use contacts. We just want access to the user. And so use contacts. Mm, not a correct, not working the way I wanted it to work. And then we need to provide our user contacts here. Contacts. And so now that works. Now we have access to our user. So now it should just work because we just basically passing the context here. So let's go check it out. So now in our app, let's go to our login screen. If I log in, so keep an eye on this button. I go coding after 30, test user. Not only should it redirect us, look, it redirects and now it removes the login button. And we should probably have a logout button that we'll do in a second. So Strappy, it's a great question. For Risa, uh, Strappy is basically a way for you to set up a backend API super quickly. So you could learn more about it by going to strappy.io and then to get click get started is gonna show you how to do it. And I created a bunch of videos on my channel how to get started. So this is if you're learning, by the way, if you're learning, let me get off and talk to you guys for a little bit here on a bigger screen now here. Uh, so if you're learning to code, right? Being a full stack developer, oh my God, it's so much to learn realistically to become a full stack developer with some sort of competency in six months to a year is really, really difficult. I just recently, maybe past six months, been learning about full stack development. And one of the easier transitions is doing it through something like Strapi. So Strapi allows you to set up a backend API like in literally in five minutes and it gives you a nice ui like you see here it has nice ui here what's cool about it though that if you do know node and you want to add some 
uh, additional custom features, you could start writing backend code within Strapi. It gives you hooks in the application. So this is our Strapi application. As you could see here, I'm going to pick uh, our comment. Norsout has the controller section. And you could add custom code here, basically writing custom backend code yourself to add additional functionality. So if you're doing front-end development, don't worry about backend, set up Strapi to have an API that you could co communicate with, which will allow you authentication. Uh, I just realized I didn't share my screen. Let me share my screen here. So this is like within Strapi code, like they have controllers. And if you wanted to, you could customize like and write custom code here if you wanted to. Um, if you need it to and it gives you a bunch of like hooks that you could hook in so what's cool about strapi it allows you to create an api super fast which will give you authentication it'll give you a back end kind of like dashboard very similar to like wordpress uh you know which will allow you to add data into your application very easily without knowing too much about front end which will also allow you to continue to develop your front end chops like we're doing today and allow you to basically you know uh have a like an api that you could use like for instance we just did authentication to our api which is what we're learning we're learning how to use react in the front end and how to apply authentication i didn't have to build that feature from scratch so that's what strappy is check out the do documentation it's super awesome so let's get back into the code yes strappy is free that's why i use it i love it i use it in a lot of my projects and we actually i recommended it to use it at work as a back end just because um you know it's e easier to get started with uh, so we'll keep working on it so all right so we got our context we got our um let's see use we got our context so the, here's the thing here like i want to show you something here like let's go back to our application so i logged in and this is kind of like i logged in right i am logged in user but watch this when i refresh um, it loses state. It doesn't remember that I was logged in. And so now I, if I want to log in again, I have to click log in again. And then I have to log in again. And after I log in, okay, I'm logged in. But as soon as I refresh my screen, I'm logged out again. It becomes annoying. It's annoying when you constantly have to log in just because you accidentally hit F5 on your keyboard to refresh your browser window. So what we want to do, we want to store this in uh, local storage and the way we're going to do that we're going to do it in our contacts here so what we're going to do here we're going to basically create a mechanism for us to be able to save this to local storage um, and then whenever someone refreshes the screen our local storage here is going to rehydrate our you know I, authenticated like our not authenticated what do I mean it's gonna rehydrate our contacts provider with what we need which is the state you know so let's go ahead and do that now unless you guys have any questions by the way like smash the like button if you haven't smashed it for not for me for you guys for being so awesome and jumping in so here's the thing that you guys might have not known maybe you guys did know instead of passing like the state here if you want something to run once and not repeat every time this reloads um, you could or anytime you set user and update the state you could pass a function in here guys so this function is going to run initially set that initial state um, and it won't do it every time you do set user um, and so what do we want to do here? And in here, we want to have our state. We're going to say local data. And this is basically from our, uh, I'm going to call it local storage. So it's more apparent. This is where we're going to get the data from local storage. So every time our application is reloaded, we're going to call local storage and from our local storage we're going to get our item and that is going to come from our user 
okay it's gonna come from our user now next thing we want to do we're gonna return that state we're gonna return our um, so we're gonna test if there is local storage meaning if there is something already in our local storage then we don't want to do and the state is not null meaning that we do have a user so let's say we have a user in state and we have a user in local storage we want to return so there is we want to do return what we have saved in local storage and so we're going to do json.parse and we're going to pass in here our local storage and if there is nothing saved in local storage we're going to return null so let's think through this so what happens is uh, local storage was used before it was defined oh i can't name it the same i get it wait what are you talking about oh local storage is an actual window object that's why i call this this is let's call it local data because local storage is a thing it's not something that the user defined this is part of the uh, browser api uh, local storage get item and so basically if there is we want to get item if there's an item oh my god if there's an item or the state is null oh my god I'm such an idiot guys if there is no data meaning it's null we want to get the data from local storage and set it it's a late night for me here and set the state to what was in our local storage so if we had something here yeah see like if this is from a different user let me delete so if we have a user here right we have a user here we're going to set our contacts from that local storage and if we don't have a user means we're not logged in it's going to set it as null man that took forever to get out of my mouth but hey this is why i do these live streams practice 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 now we want to make sure uh, that we have a use effect and this is where we're going to oh my god typing is so difficult for me and in this use effect, we're going to check if there's a user, meaning if we have a user in our local uh, state, then we want to set the local storage. I guess like I could have put because it's a window object. It's the same here, window. Window local storage, we want to do set item and we want to set our user with what was local state in our context. So we're going to do JSON stringify to, you know, cause we're sending a uh, object. So we want to stringify it. So it could be stored um, as JSON in our storage. So basically if we have a user in our contacts save the user to local storage and we'll see that in play in just a second else if there is no user in our local uh, state and contacts let's do local storage dot clear and so now basically what this is going to do we're going to log in in just a second and so let's go to the login form. I know I had an annoying console log that's constantly popping up here. Let's remove this console log. And then I had an alert somewhere that was annoyingly popping up. Let me search for alerts and remove alerts so they don't bug us anymore. Form submitted. Let's remove this. All right, so now let's kind of slow down here again, go to context. So basically what we did is we create a use effect which basically checked if there is user in context save that user to local storage save it to a browser and if there is no user clear uh, the local uh, storage we don't need anything and then here what we did is whenever this initially loads it checks 
do we have a user in local storage? If it's not null, meaning if there's a user, we want to get that from our local storage and set it into our context. I hope you guys get it. So let's take a look at our code. Maybe we broke something. Let's take a look. So, okay. So Norse here right now, there's no user. So we're going to go to login. I'm going to type coding app 30 test user password. And then when I hit sign in, look, we redirect it. We're logged in and Norse here. Um, we are, we have our user stored in our local storage. So now when I refresh, what, what, what are you kidding me? Well, it, it almost worked. We almost did it. Yeah, uh, we almost got there. Let's take a look why that could be happening. Token. Okay. Login. Coding out the user. Test user. So it sets the state. Now on refresh, something happens. When I run refresh, somehow something breaks. Huh. Oh, okay. Let's take a look here. So I think this, so here's the issue. This use effect right now runs no matter what all the time. So I think this is what's breaking it. We want the use effect to run initially once or only when the user changes. So by default, if you don't add this um, like array with arguments that you want it to watch and only do something when that thing changes, like for instance, when user changes, then it will fire this. Otherwise, it'll just fire nonstop. I think that was what was breaking our app. So let's take a look. Refresh. Nope, still broken. User provider user contacts am i not using contacts somewhere yeah this is like the boring part whenever stuff goes wrong you try to figure it out try to make it work yeah i just realized i also haven't been paying attention to a lot of my comments sorry about that let me come back so is it a cookie? It's not a cookie. It's just a JW uh, token. Uh, could you go for more vibrant colors and thumbnails and also with text and change hard to read? And also, you, yeah, eventually I get there for sure. For sure. I will make those improvements. Paul, have you thought about incorporating tests to the spreadsheet? I do manual testing. And right now, if I had to write tests also, uh, number one, uh, I haven't done tests to be like sufficiently good in terms of running writing tests. And both companies I worked for, that was not a requirement uh, because they have people that do test their application. Um, and so I'm not going to do it in this application because it's going to be another thing that we have to learn and focus. I want to really focus just on React. Then once we finish this application with just with React and JavaScript, then we could kind of improve it by using TypeScript. So that way we'll avoid some common mistakes that we could make that will cause errors. And then eventually we could figure out how to write tests with Jest uh, to eventually make things work. But we're not going to do that at the moment because otherwise this project will take me forever. Like I literally want to make sure that we have a deployable application that uh, will run for us. And so that's kind of like, you know, my thought about it. Uh, anyway, guys, do you have any questions? Um, kind of like in terms of what we're doing while I start to figure out like why this is broken and doesn't work. User context, user set user. I wonder if like, I, like this is like the test thing that I do. Like the code that I wrote, if I remove it, would it uh, fix the error or break it? So let me remove this because I know this was breaking it. And let me remove this because this was breaking it. And go back, refresh, and then do login, 
Coding app 30 test user sign in. So that didn't break it. Refresh. That didn't break it. Um, we introduce the code that I delete. Oops. Let me uh, take out this use effect. Let's see if the code's still broken. And so this is kind of like you try to do stuff through trial and error. Error was thrown. React have not access. State. So it's breaking somewhere here. What if I do this and return null? Log in. So that didn't break it. So the error is in our use state. Something happening here. But it was working before because we were saving the user to local storage. Hmm. And sometimes you're gonna have these weird like like bugs that you're just like, what? How? How? Maybe it doesn't like that I put window. Maybe it just doesn't like that, which would be weird that it doesn't like it. Local data, return local data. Let's refresh. What is the error? The really use a provider. I hate it when it doesn't show you. Let's see, maybe that's console log. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Doesn't like how we're saving our state, but it makes no sense. Maybe it's um Okay, 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 okay. So right now we should have a user. Man, that's awesome, Lucky. For me, I did it backwards. I uh, learned React first and then started to learn Node and Express. But Node and Express is awesome. And if you feel very comfortable with like Node and Express, you could start learning uh, doing uh, GraphQL powered uh, APIs with Node and you could use Apollo server or there's a bunch of other things like Yoga that allow you to do that. But it's kind of cool. It's still a lot to learn. Like I don't know too much of it so the issue i think is the way we're returning the data if user local storage get item user so this one should not have an issue so window local storage set item user kind of I'm gonna mess with this a little bit more before giving up so I think it's airing out when it's trying to get the user from local storage Kitty cat, can't you say hello? Okay, kitty, go. Token, it's here. It is an object. It has a token. Yep. It's probably something simple too. I'm just not able to see it now. Hmm. 
But sometimes like you just get these errors and like sometimes the best thing to do is take a break and walk away. I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes here to figure it out. It just really surprisingly doesn't make sense to me. just return null no matter what see if it complains return no because I don't think it's getting the yeah that's what the issue is it's not able to get the value back so I'm able to log in coding after 30 test user sign in I'm able to set the user so be able to set the user but for some reason that's not working let me refresh, see if it breaks. Probably will break. No, it doesn't break. So that's definitely where the issue is. Oh, okay. I see. Guys, like when you think you could never make a mistake like I can you are wrong like talk about being an idiot and this is what happens sometimes guys this is like super boring because sometimes you look at code so much that you start to overlook things and this was like a very simple mistake i'm going to quickly show it to you guys so if you see on line 10 here let me delete this that's where the error was happening and i did it through just kind of deleting code so i am passing local storage local storage is not what i want to pass i want to pass um I want to parse our user in there or the data that we're getting from our state. We want to save, uh, we want to get this data that we're getting from the, oh my God, local storage. I want to get the data from local storage and return in our state. This is what I need and this is going to fix it. I'm an idiot. That's not local. That's what happens when you name things too closely related. So now it should work. So let's kind of come back to our code here. So let me delete this. Let me refresh here. All right. So now when I go to, oh my God, what am I doing? When I go to login here, I'm going to log in, test user, sign in. This signs in and redirects us to where we need to go. And then it's beautiful. And now if I refresh the screen, it should not log me out. Notice that I'm still logged in. I can't log out because we don't have a log in, log out button. We could do that next. So home here, refresh. Okay, perfect. And if I delete this in state, if you don't have any users in local storage and you refresh, now it's going to ask you to log in again. So that's fantastic. It's working. So let's try to power through this and finish up what we need. We need to do a couple more items. Uh, look at my list of things that we need to do. So we got our login to work. We got our redirect to work. That's fine. We got our, um, let's see, we got our what should we call it we're passing our context to work so log out yeah awesome debugging life yeah like it's that's the hard part that's why i decided to do the live stream exactly for this like when you run into issues and kind of like deal with them live you know because that's the whole part of coding and i want you guys to give you the most realistic expectation of what we're going to do yeah, you never see these in pre-recorded. Yeah, almost never. And hologram nunchucks. I was debugging for a couple of days only to discover that I had added a necessary comma. Yeah, and SAS file that using. Yep. Dude, I feel like a knucklehead every day of my life, every minute, just because of uh, coding. So now that 
we have our local storage actually let me log in because this is important because it comes back to what i talked at the beginning of the video whenever you're making graphql requests that you want to be secure as logged in i uh, use you have to pass the jw token and the next part that i'm going to do you could just look it up on the documentation i literally copied and pasted that code from the documentation because it's pretty straightforward but notice how we have access to the token here so i'm going to go to our Apollo configuration, which we wrote here. And we commented this stuff out because we weren't using it before, but now we're going to use it. Basically, what we're going to do is allow us to pass our token to our Apollo client. Cat, you're jumping all over my keyboard. You're, you're typing too fast. Okay. You're making me type fast and break stuff. Okay, what did my cat do here? Okay, this is fine. Yep, export. Apollo client. Client. Yep, export const. Export const. I think this is the one that I want to... Oh, no, I want to have this one. I, wanna... I wrote it twice last time. But anyway, so here we go. So now... Yeah, I deleted the wrong, the wrong one. Yep, the, wrong, the bottom one, this one we don't need. Yep, yep, and now we just wanna uncomment this. So here, yeah, I'll, I'll review this quickly in a second. Uh, this is literally boilerplate from the Apollo documentation, but here's the thing, and remember how earlier in GraphQL I showed you, you need to pass a bearer token, and you need to pass a token that allows you to authenticate as a user when making requests. So we want to make sure that we pass that token uh, in to our application. Um, and so this is where we do it. And the way we get it, we get it through our local, uh, we get it through our local storage state where we just saved the user and saved here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that we get that here so let me fix me how do I make this wrap can't make it wrap okay so basically what we need to have here is we by the way this is confusing but basically unless we're doing a login mutation it's not gonna run this code but every time you're logging in it's gonna check is there a user in local storage if there's a user we want to get the user and get the token and we want to pass that token into our application so that's basically what uh the change i had to make here i know you didn't see it off screen but i basically add get the user token that we just looked at in our uh, local storage and pass it to our application and so that should work fine which we won't be able to test until we actually start making those private requests, which we could test in uh, a minute here. Actually, let's let's test it out. Let's go back here. One way to test it. Let me refresh it. So remember how, uh, la let me log out here. Remember how right now getting these blogs, it's uh, public. So anybody could view them and that's how we want it. But for the sake of testing, um you know let's make it private and make this not work until we log in so let me refresh the screen here so let me go to our strappy and that's another beauty of using strappy like i want to make something private very easy i go into roles go into public right now our getting our likes and projects is set to public let's uh unselect it so for now it's going to break our app uh just because i don't have a like it's going to show an error that I save, save, and then I'm just going to make sure that in setting roles in authenticated user. So yeah, you should be able to get the projects and likes if you're authenticated. Let's save. So now if you go back to our application here, I refresh. Notice how we arrowed out. Now because we don't have access to view this, now let's log in. 
And in theory, once we log in, we should be passing the JW token here. Yep, notice how we got the token here and notice now the content that was private before, we are now able to see. So that actually works. Our GraphQL is getting access to our token, which is nice. So that's awesome. So let me go back to my settings here and change it back for the public access for the blog posts because anybody should be able to see those. They should be able to get the project, at least find one, see all and get the count save so yeah we're making great progress i guess the only thing we need to do now is add a logout button so whenever we want to log out we're logged in right now right i'm logged in but i can't log out so let's log out which will clear the apollo store uh, which will become important later and then also remove this from our you know local storage and then yeah, so the course that I recommend is John Smigla's React course. So let's go uh, Udemy. Uh, uh, John. Oh my God. Type John Smigla. I can't type, but I'm sure audio, I'm sure it's smart. John Smigla right there. And I recommend, are you kidding me? I typed in his last name and you don't show his React course. I hate you, Udemy. You gotta get your stuff together. So let's see here. Modern React, Tim Griner, become a senior React developer. Yeah, I don't know why they don't show his course. His course is amazing. It's this React tutorial project course. It's amazing. It's uh, over 48 hours of content. And this course is, is great. Um, that's the one that I recommend. Anybody that I coach, I tell them, do his HTML, CSS course, do his JavaScript course, and do his React course. So that's what I would recommend. So to finally finish up this tutorial, Damn lucky, you're killing me. It's 4 a.m. When do you when do you even sleep, my man? But I appreciate you, bro. I love you so much because I totally understand. I understand. Like you're you're the first one here, last one to leave. 4 a.m. Man, we but we're gonna get this done. We're just gonna finish up with adding the final step to our application, which is our logout button. And then you know what? We have our backend hooked up with this idea where we have authenticated users that will able to log in and they'll be able to make requests easily, you know, that will allow them to only do stuff with their private. Oh yeah, we also have to make sure that our, <laughs> nice, lucky, you're, you're killing me. Uh, I can't sleep while this is running. It make me feel guilty, bro. Come on, man. Uh, so we're almost done. So two things you have to do. Number one, we wanna make sure that we show our private routes when we're logged in, we're gonna do that. Uh, let's let's do the login button first, and then we'll do the private routes quickly, and then we'll be done. So I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes to complete both those things fast. So top navigation, right? We wanna get access. Again, we wanna, we're already calling our contacts here. So here we're writing the code. If there's a user, um, you know, like, sh you know, don't show on the login button. If there's like, if you're logged in, there's no point of having login buttons. So that's what we're handling here. So now what we're going to do, uh, we're going to add our uh, button here for basically for um, logging out. So if there is a user, so if user exists, you should show him the login button. And what we're going to use, we're going to use a component from React Bootstrap, their button component. We're gonna use variant. And this is all the styling from React Bootstrap. So that way I don't have to style it with my own CSS. I could just give the style that I want here. We want the size to be small. 
and I'll show you where I got this in just a second and then we're gonna do an unclick event which for now we're not gonna write here we're just gonna put a blank function we'll write it and just I, well, let's write it unclick we're gonna call it handle log out that's gonna be the name of this function handle log out um, finishing up this button component and then this is gonna be log out button it's complaining why well, is that bottom scene it's complaining that that function doesn't exist so let's go ahead and create our handle log out component here handle log out all right and what do we want to do we want a number one in our handle log out we want to clear the local storage so we're gonna do local storage and i believe it's clear so when we log out it's gonna clear the local storage then we also want to clear our context so i'm gonna use set user and we want to set it to null so there is no user and make sure that we speech synthesis utterance that's not what i said i said set user you dipshit set user and then we want to make sure that we also get set user from our context so basically when we hit log out it's going to clear the local storage it's going to set user to null and then it's also going to clear uh we have to clear the apollo store and this is something that you just have to know after using graphql so we want to import i forgot what we port uh yeah we need access to use apollo client and this is something that i'll talk more about it but might as well add it here it'll basically clean you know like all the queries we're making we're using apollo so when you log out if we made queries to private information if you don't clear the store people will still be able to see it so we want to make sure that um we clear the client use apollo client we clear that store so you're not able to see private data if let's say you logged out but you forgot to turn off your computer we don't want that we want to clear client i can't spell and then we just want to i think client has a method clear on it clear things called clear store okay so this is our handle logout so basically what we did here we created a button let me out of format this here so it's visible here so we created a button that's only uh visible when we're logged in and then afterwards um when we click that button it's gonna fire our handle logout function that we declared on top here that's gonna clear our local storage it's gonna set our contacts user to null and it's gonna clear our apollo store so let's test it out so notice how i'm logged in now notice how we have our user and local storage so if i refresh it doesn't log me out because that well that would be a bad experience but now when we hit log out boom it logged me out and we no longer logged in so if i go to log in i'm able to log in again when i log in test user sign in boom i'm logged in we have it here so a log out button works it displays when it necessary so if i log out it's going to show us the login button but it's not going to show us the log out uh button boom because we're logged out so the last step what we want to do is I removed it out of the menu, but eventually there's going to be a private route that's going to show you the details page. But to see the details, you do have to be, you know, authenticated user because I don't want just anybody to be looking at your portfolios and adding comments. I want people from our community to be able to do that. So what we're going to go ahead is we're going to go and we're going to make sure that we add that functionality to our private route that we already set up earlier so i'm going to show you where it is but at the moment it was hard coded i believe it's in app.js if i go to app.js we have our routes here right we set up our private route here that handles the logic of what to do um if like if you're logged in 
you want it to show the information. If you're logged out, don't show private routes. And right now you see here, we're getting that state from uh, hard coded values. So instead we're gonna get from context, we're going to get uh, the user context and we're going to use that to determine. So if we are logged in, we wanna use that state. And we also here wanna put Import React. I didn't do an import VR tier. It's okay. We want to Im import. Uh, I'll do React out of habit, even though you don't need it anymore. Uh, we want to import use context. Oh my God. All day. Use context from React. Okay, and then now we want to get that context. We want to get the user. So within our app here, we want to get access to const user equals use context. So we make context. I don't know why I have autocorrect here. It doesn't work like it's supposed to. It's so annoying. And we want to pass a user context. user context. I'm like rushing now because I want to not make the stream too long because you know people try to go to sleep here but I want to finish also. So we have user so instead of passing the hard-coded value that we had we pass user and so now uh, we want to test this to see that we could only go to a private route if uh, we Authenticate it. So let me go to the top navigation because for now I kind of removed it here. Let me open this link. So this link, if I click it, is going to take us to project detail page, which is private. So we only want it to take us there when we are logged in. But if we are logged out, we want it to take us to a login uh, screen. So let's test it. So I'm logged out right now, right? So in theory, when I click this, this should take me to the login screen. So let's test it. Perfect. Notice when I try to go to a private route, it did not take me to that route because it's private. You have to be logged in. So let's log in. Sign in. We're logged in. You could tell we have the logout button. We have our token here. Everything works. So now when I click this, fingers crossed, it should take us to our project detail page, and it does. And what happens if I log out? Boom, it takes us to the login page because you should not see the private information unless you're logged in. So let's do like a super quick recap. So we started with our application, we had the login form, and we basically wrote all the code that allows us now to connect to our API to be able to log in so now whenever i log in it works and to make the experience better we made sure that once you logged in if someone refreshes the browser it doesn't log you out because why sh why like you didn't log out so a refresh shouldn't log you out so that's a better experience because we're storing our context in our local storage and so let's kind of quickly review the changes in the code that we made um, to finish up so in Apollo, the change that we made here is we uh, hooked back stuff that I wrote in the original uh, pod uh, show when I started on day one, implementing the use of using local storage to get our token. That's basically what this code here. And by the way, I'll share this uh, repo uh, with you guys. By the way, guys, I'll do it right now. If you want to see uh, this repo, I'll go to GitHub. I'll paste it here. I'll share both of them. Uh, we have community one client. So this is the application to run just the front end. And again, this is not going to work unless you have the back end. I'll share the back end. Unfortunately, the back end is also not going to work until you set up your own uh, version of PostgreSQL and hook it up, um, which will take you a bunch of Googling. But let me share it here in the comments here if you guys are interested and I'll push that code to the main branch that we did here 
and let me also find the com the Strapi app. That's the API Community One API. So if you guys made it this far, you guys get access to the repo to check it out. Uh, but let's take a look at the code to finish up. So that was the changes here. So next we've worked on our form. I'll just go to the file and in the form what we did is we basically added our mutation that we're going to call. We passed that mutation to our use mutation hook. <laughs> yeah, let's go for two more hours. Yeah, I know, I know, I wish, but dude, my brain is going to fry. Some of these errors that we had that were so stupid because I can't spell like hurt my brain. But anyway, so we implemented our, our login mutation. We had a handle form submit function. There was a bunch of other stuff we could do here, like better error handling. But for now, we don't worry about it. We just want the general functionality to work. Um, and so when we fire our handle form submit, it runs our mutation. We get our callback function, which is uses our context API and it sets our context from the form that we receive here we used local storage to save our contacts to local storage so whenever someone refreshes a browser it doesn't kick them out we use this awesome provider that we exported in our index.js to wrap our application in our user provider that's the reason why we have access to it and in our navigation you know we implemented our handle logout logic with our button we also now don't have to prop drill because it's easy for us to pass our state from our user contacts and that's kind of what we're doing here so we did a lot today guys and so the last thing i'm going to do here which i didn't do it was my mistake my fault this is bad practice but i'm going to show you notice how i made all the changes in the master branch this is not good you see, it's master branch. I shouldn't have not done that. What I needed to do, and I could at least luckily do it now, I should have made a new branch and called login logic or whatever it is called. I'm just gonna save it here. And then now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push it to my repo. And where's my terminal it's hiding? And then I'm gonna exit it's so annoying and then in my terminal here i'm going to do get status Just always make sure that you guys making changes not in the uh master branch make sure you do a separate branch luckily i was able to fix that now i did login logic that's our branch i did get status so now let's do get add all i don't know why it's so ugly to see this on the bottom of the screen like that now let's do get status again so let's do get commit message implemented login auth login with auth um, and then i'm gonna click this do i could write get you know push but i'll just click here this will push our changes that we just made to our github and so now let me switch back to master because you want to make sure that we only put the uh, changes into master right that are tested and works like you don't want to make changes in the master so now what i would do here is if you have team of people you would do a team of people but let's go to my community one project here one client and so now it's going to show us look you made login log logic uh push a minute ago so what you would do is you would do compare pull request you would create a pull request um, and then you would basically if you have someone that works with you you would like add a reviewer i should add you guys guys like this uh like I should figure out how to add some of you guys so that way you guys could review the code. But anyway, um, I, you know, because I don't, like, I'm just going to assign it to myself, uh, right? 
And then now what you do, you create a pull request, which I just did. And now when you go to, did I click create pull request? Yeah, I did. So now when you go to pull requests, we have implemented login with authentication. That's the one we just did. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the file changes we made. So now you always want to review your code before you push it into master. So since I just wrote it, right? Like I'm like, okay, I know, I know this stuff works because we just looked at it, but take your time review. Sometimes you'll be able to see some mistakes here, you know, okay. Okay. And then after you review the changes and you feel happy with it, you know, and obviously like if you work on a team, this is something somebody else would do. Now I could go to my implement login with auth. It passed all my checks and now with squash and merge, confirm squash and merge. And now this uh, pushes it into the main branch. Now I could delete the branch here because we don't need it. And now what I could do is I could go to my React application, um, click refresh, or get pull. Let me do get. I think like because I did the changes in master already, might have saved them there. But let me do get f all. I think that get fetch. I think I have to do it at the beginning. No, it should be here. Okay, so fetch all. Yeah, I must have already committed the changes, which is bad. Normally you wouldn't do it that way. Normally you would do it via the pull request, but you know, once you make the changes, and it was my fault, you could test by doing npm run start and make sure that, you know, I mean, we already tested that it works, but I just want to show you, don't forget to make sure that every time you do features, so next stream, if I start and I'm working on master branch, yell at me, you should always be working in your um, feature branch. So everything works, log out works, login works, you know, That still works. If you're logged in, we see the project detail. If you log out, we're no longer able to see project detail. So perfect, we're done. Like, th look, I know it's like slightly longer stream. Not only the troopers made it till the end. It was like two hours of amazingness. If you still haven't liked the stream, what are you doing? Like the stream. But all of you guys, I appreciate all you guys tuning in. And again, like I don't need to do these streams, but I do these streams and Lucky, thank you for like, like I do it because Lucky is here all the time. I do it obviously for all of you guys because I know how important it is to make sure that you constantly have a role model that constantly talking about building your projects and showing you that it's okay to suffer. You know how many people are gonna watch this stream and laugh at me be like, oh, look how slow he's doing stuff or look at how like he's making mistakes or sometimes he's stupid, like whatever. But the point is, I don't care because at the end of the day, I'm building something. and. If I were to challenge you guys is to pick one project, don't try to build a lot of stuff. Like this is my main project for now, you know, and just build one project to completion and deploy it. You want to deploy it. That's what the skill you develop from building your own projects like we're doing on this live stream. And this is the whole point of doing this live stream to show you guys that like the real kind of like what it really like to code is what's going to land you that job, right? If you can't build stuff from scratch, if you can't troubleshoot like we're doing here, like you're not gonna be able to get a job, it'll be very difficult. And if you have a job, you already know this stuff, but I just wanted to tell you that. And I wanna say lots of love to all of you guys. I really appreciate all your support of this channel. I know I've been doing a lot of live streams and not releasing a lot of like videos. So I'm gonna get back to making videos as well in between my streams. But I think like there's a lot of value even though like not everybody likes these type of coding streams, but there's a lot of value, this concept of number one, the way you become a good developer is not by doing tutorials, it's by building projects. You need to do tutorials to learn how to code, but to become a developer, you need to build, you need to build projects, you need to fail like I'm doing on the stream, you need to like troubleshoot, you have to look at the documentation, do stuff with trial and error, that's all normal. And that's what's gonna give you the confidence to be able to do well on interviews, to be able to do well when you're at your job because at your job, people are gonna ask you to build stuff. This is kind of like the way things work, you know? And so that's why I think this is an awesome stream. And then six months from now, a year from now, you're gonna see that we make progress. I mean, if you look back on all of our previous streams, we already made progress. And the whole point here is to show you no matter how much time you put, we put in a couple of hours a week, but if you stay consistent, you have a plan and you keep working through, you're going to make 
like accomplishments and you're going to get to where you need to go and you're going to get the job you're going to get that skill and that's why i do the stream so love all of you guys thank you so much for everything lucky it was dope always uh see you in the next one i'll thank you my man hey good job no great job for sticking out here hologram nunchucks always best always here thanks my man so with that being said guys i love you all um let me just put my uh uh, put my discord here the reason I put discord is because we have the Tuesday night live stream channel there and you guys could go ahead on discord and you can ask questions that are pertaining to this live stream but anyway we made a lot of progress that was amazing God bless love you all and I'll see you guys next stream